Hello, this is Dr. Jerry Lloyd, and I want to talk about Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. And it's where God says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now, what I want to find out, what I want to talk about at least, is what in the world does it mean to be espoused? In Matthew 1.18, God tells us that Mary was espoused to Joseph. Now, a couple of things that we need to know is what does the espouse mean? And the word espouse, if you look it up in the dictionary, it means married. And you might be able to figure that out by the term spouse that is found inside of the word. And so it's talking about a person who is actually married. And Mary was espoused to Joseph. Now, the reason I say that is because some, there are some that have said that this is, that they were engaged. No, they weren't engaged. They were promised, that Mary was promised to be married. No, it, it, the promise was already had been kept, if you want to make it that way. Or, or, or maybe they were, uh, betrothed. Betrothed is before marriage. A spouse is after the vows. It, here's what the, the story is about an espousal. A, it's not like anything we really have today in this nation anyway, in the United States. It is where the parents would get together and before this time there would be any number of engagements and these engagements were easily broken and they would often have many and but eventually they would come to to the realization of who they wanted to be their daughter-in-law if it was the parents arranging it or who they wanted to be their their uh, daughter's husband, the groom, and they would get together and agree on the price of the dowry to pay the, the, uh, the parent, the parents of the bride for the, well, for, for the marriage. Now, what that happened with that money was, of course, it was paid to the parents, but the parents then would give it back as a gift to the bride. And she would wear them on her hat and show off wh how wealthy her husband was. And if he should ever divorce her, which was not an easy thing back then, but if that would happen, then she would be sent out with those as her uh, source of income or living, if you wanted to call it that. And so that's what the 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 preamble, if you will, to the espouse. So what would actually happen at the ceremony, the, they would get together and they would negotiate for this price. The friend of the bridegroom, as is spoken in John chapter 3 of John the Baptist and Jesus Christ, it says, he that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. Now, what that's talking about is when they would get together and negotiate the price. Of course, the price that Jesus paid for his bride, the bride of Christ is the church, was he shed his blood, not by bulls and goats, the blood of bulls and goats as, as in the past, but by his own precious blood, he paid the pie price, not by silver and gold, but by his own death on the cross. He paid for our sins and then bought us for himself. So that is what the, the, uh, what would happen. They would have a contract. They would exchange rings, they would make vows to one another, and then they would be married. And then for a year, even though they were husband and wife, for a year they did not come together. And he would go out, he would build his house, he would build his business, he would uh, you know, take care of his flocks and plant his gardens, and eventually she would come and live with him at the end of the year uh, of the espousal period.
And that is the time what they would do is she would live with her parents for a whole year. And then after the year, the the bridegroom would come and get her and there would be a great parade. And a lot of times it was at night and they would put lamps on sticks and carry lamps and and the oil in the lamps. So there's a story about the, the ten virgins, you know. And, and so... They would come and then they would come to his house and at this house they would have the marriage feast. The marriage feast would last a whole week long and everybody was invited. Nobody was allowed to leave or come after they had shut the door. And so this was the marriage. This is where blessings were given, but no vows were exchanged. No rings were exchanged. No price was exchanged. All that had happened a year earlier. So when it says that she was espoused to Joseph, it is pointing out that she was actually married to Joseph at this time. And of course, uh, he was married to her. Now, why do I go through this? Is I, I think it's interesting what they went through back then, but also there are some translations that are not very accurate. In fact, they are, they do not translate it accurate at all. They use a completely different term that does not mean the same thing as the word here. And so we need to be careful of our translations. This won't affect doctrine too awful much if they don't translate it correctly, but it shows you their attitude toward translations. I like the way it's translated in the old King James because it tells us the story of the espousal period. Now, if you have enjoyed this little uh, explanation, then like us, share what we have put uh, said about the spousal period, a and then subscribe so you can get more of these. Thank you much. This is Dr. Jerry Lloyd.